Magic Ballerina Delphi and the Masked Ball Delphi's Adventures Darcy Bustle Prologue In the soft, pale light, the girl stood with her head bent and her hands held lightly in front of her. There was a moment's silence and then the first notes of the music began. For as long as the girl could remember music had seemed to tell her of another world a magical, exciting world that lay far, far away. She always felt if she could just close her eyes and lose herself. Then she would get there. Maybe this time. As the music swirled inside her, she swept her arms above her head, rose onto her toes and began to dance. 1. The Dress Rehearsal Delphi Durand danced in the bright spotlight. Around her on stage, the other girls from her ballet school stood in darkness. Delphi was playing the main part in the show The Bluebird Who Brought Light Back to the Animals in the Woods. She finished with one leg stretched out behind, her arms held out like wings, holding the pose perfectly without a single wobble. Slowly the lights began to come up on the stage, as if sunlight was gently returning. The other dancers looked around in wonder and then suddenly they all began to dance. Delphi skimmed across the floor with tiny steps. It was wonderful being up there and it reminded her of the time she had been in another theater a secret, magical one. For Delphi owned a pair of special red ballet shoes and when they started sparkling they whisked her away to a theater in the magical land of Enchantia. All the characters from the different ballets lived in Enchantia and Delphi had enjoyed some great adventures there. As the music ended and everyone relaxed out of their final poses, Delphi heard the sound of her ballet teacher, Madame Zaza, clapping from the hall. Well done, everyone, Madame Zaza called, smiling at them all. That was a very good dress rehearsal. Go and get changed and then I will give you some notes so we can make the actual performance even better. Delphi stretched. Her muscles felt warm and tingly. Her two friends, Lola and Poppy, came running over to her. You were brilliant, Delphi. Lola exclaimed. I wasn't. Delphi blushed modestly. I got some things wrong. I didn't see you get anything wrong at all, said Poppy loyally. Well, I did, came a voice behind them. Delphi looked round. Suki Taylor, one of the other girls in their dancing class, was standing behind them in her rabbit costume. Don't be so mean, Suki. Lola frowned. Ignore her, Poppy muttered to Delphi. She's just jealous. Delphi had a feeling Poppy was right. Suki had been hoping she would be the bluebird and ever since Delphi had got the part Suki had been really horrid to her in class. Suki scowled at Delphi. Madame Zaza should never have picked you to be the bluebird. I'd have been much better. And, tossing her head, she marched off. Delphi felt the excitement and happiness fade away. But seeing Poppy looking cross, she forced herself to act like she didn't care. She wouldn't want her friends to be upset too. Come on, she said, trying to sound cheerful. Let's go and get changed. Delphi ran lightly off the stage with Poppy and Lola following. But as she reached the wings, someone came running towards her from the opposite direction. Delphi was taken by surprise and they collided heavily, with Delphi crashing to the floor. Looking up, she realized it was Suki. Ow! Suki said, rubbing her elbow. Watch where you're going, Delphi. You were the one who ran into me. Delphi went to get up but pain stabbed through her left foot and she gasped. Ow! My ankle! Poppy tried to help her, but when Delphi put her foot down it really hurt. I can't stand, she said. I'll go and get Madame Zaza. Poppy dashed off. Lola swung round to Suki. You did that on purpose. Suki scowled. What do you mean? I bet you tripped Delphi up because you wanted her to be hurt. Lola said accusingly. 
You're her understudy so if she doesn't dance the part of the bluebird, you will. Delphi stared. Was Lola right? Had Suki really run into her on purpose? Suki turned red. I. I didn't, she stammered. I. She broke off as the backstage door opened and Madame Zaza came hurrying into the wings. Delphi. What's happened? Delphi blinked back the tears. I've hurt my ankle. But how? Madame Zaza asked. Suki sent Delphi an imploring look. For a moment it was on the tip of Delphi's tongue to say that Suki had run into her on purpose. But she didn't know that for sure and anyway she hated it when people told tales and got others into trouble. I. I tripped, she said. I was running off the stage and I just tripped over. Poppy and Lola stared at her. That isn't what. Lola began. It I asked what happened, Delphi interrupted. She saw a look of relief flash across Suki's face. Let me see. Madame Zaza gently unlaced Delphi's ballet shoe and turned Delphi's ankle this way and that. Delphi caught her breath. It really did hurt. Can you move your toes? Madame Zaza asked. Delphi nodded and wriggled them. It is probably just a sprain, Madame Zaza said, after examining it a moment longer. But you'll need to go to hospital to have it checked over. Hopefully it should be back to normal in a week or so. Poppy and Lola gasped. A week, said Delphi in dismay. But what about the show? Madame Zaza looked at her sadly. I'm afraid you're not going to be better in time to dance in it, Delphi. Suki will have to take the part of the bluebird. Tears welled up in Delphi's eyes, blinding her so she couldn't see the expression on Suki's face. She didn't need to see it though. She knew just how delighted Suki would be. 2. A Surprise Visitor The following day, Delphi lay on the sofa at home listening to the music of a ballet called Swan Lake and rested her ankle. The doctor she had seen at the hospital had told her that it was indeed a nasty sprain and confirmed that she couldn't dance on it for at least a couple of weeks. Delphi's eyes were red with crying. She'd practiced so hard to be the bluebird over the last month and had been looking forward to it so much. It was so unfair that Suki was getting to dance the part instead of her. The more Delphi thought about it, the more she felt sure that Suki had knocked her over on purpose. It was just the kind of thing Suki would do. Thinking about it made fresh tears spring to her eyes. She blinked them away and tried to concentrate on the music. She knew the piece well. It was from a scene where the prince in the story was standing near an enchanted lake watching a group of swans dance for him, led by the swan princess. Delphi sighed. She desperately wanted to be up practicing and dancing, not lying on a sofa. She looked at the floor. Her red ballet shoes were there. If only they would glow and take her to Enchantia. She had been willing them to do just that but nothing had happened yet. Everything must be quiet in Enchantia, thought Delphi. The shoes only took her to the magic land when the characters needed her help. Delphi didn't know whether to feel glad for her friends that everything must be okay or whether to wish something would go wrong so she could go and see them all. She leaned over and picked the shoes up. The beautiful music from Swan Lake swelled through the room. Delphi couldn't resist slipping the ballet shoes on. She sighed longingly. If only I could get up and dance, she thought. As she did up her ribbons, she heard the front doorbell. Delphi's mum answered it. There was the murmur of voices and then Mrs. Durand called from the hall, Delphi. There's a friend here from your ballet class to see you. Suki. Suki. What was she doing calling round? Coming over to gloat probably, thought Delphi, her heart sinking. The last thing she felt like doing was seeing Suki. Then suddenly, amazingly enough, 
her feet started to tingle. The ballet shoes were sparkling and glowing. The tingling feeling whooshed through her body all the way from her toes to the top of her head and the next minute she was spinning up into the air and twirling round in a rainbow of colors. Delphi landed with a bump and looked about, expecting to find herself in the theater again but this time she was standing beside a window in a large round bedroom that had a four-poster bed and a white fluffy rug on the floor. Delphi! A beautiful girl with long brown hair came hurrying over from the doorway. Her hands outstretched in greeting. She was wearing a long pale blue dress and a silver tiara. Princess Aurelia! Delphi gasped. When she had last been to Enchantia, Delphi had managed to save Princess Aurelia from having to marry the evil King Rat. Aurelia hugged.